Hi, good morning. It's Jim from the Lifestyle Observatory. I just wanted to, in this video, just quickly give you a rundown of some of the things that we cover here at the observatory, like um, you know, the um, migrating pole, CO2 muons, and etc. etc. Now, before I do, I just want to say, guys, you know, it is an observatory, and we actually know what's going on with these anomalies that we we're about to reveal the conditions of, and it's simply because we have got the equipment to monitor it. If you've been following us on uh, YouTube, you'll know that we have built things like oxygen um, detectors, you know, using state-of-the-art uh, oxygen sensors. Uh, you know, we monitor muons with particle detectors using silicon photomultipliers. Again, these silicon photomultipliers are, you know, the cutting edge of technology. On top of that, you know, we monitor things like CO2 with off-the-shelf CO2 meters that give us a good, accurate reading of the uh, reservoir of CO2 uh, in parts per million in our atmosphere. And more importantly, with regards to the pole that's migrating, uh, we have bespoke equipment which took two years to develop and monitors the progression of the magnetic poles uh, around our uh, on our northern and southern hemisphere at a rate of every three seconds you know that is an amazingly high resolution we've been criticized in the past for you know uh, watching paint dry because of the resolution but you know what we're doing here is trying to have a full account of this pole migration so that we can present all the data that we've collected at least over the last two years after the pole has gone through its reversal and say look this is how it did it and it did it as we recorded it on a three second interval so 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year we record every three seconds the position the strength of the magnetic poles on this earth so just to get into it the pole is migrating as you guys know if you've been following at around about four miles per month so it's still migrating towards siberia um, co2 is at around 410 to 440 parts per million the muons are ranging between 500 and 600 counts per hour per square meter oxygen still remains over 21 percent uh, the magnetosphere is steady but still has reduced 20% over the, over the last 50 years. Uh, solar activity remains very low and the jet streams remain on the Earth pretty much unsettled, as you guys know, as a result of two main things, a grand solar minimum, shrinking the heliosphere, and a weakened magnetosphere, and both of these things coming inside with each other, allowing more cosmic radiation inbound. Now, just on the anomalies that we've talked about here, there are a lot of other anomalies that we cover on our website. Um, you might know if you've been over there, we cover solar activity, uh, the Schumann residence, um, cosmic ray data from other uh, research facilities. We've got um, earthquakes and volcano maps. We have live uh, satellite images of the Earth's weather, including radar, we also cover um, sea temperatures, precipitation, there's a lot of stuff guys that we've put as a package which should enable you if you've got an interest in any one of the anomalies that are taking place on our earth it is a one-stop shop and it is mainly dedicated to the geomagnetic reversal which we are currently in and have been in for the last hundred years and just to give you a rundown on what's been going on with that over the last hundred years we've seen a shift three times where the speed is picked up with the migration and therefore covered more distance in a shorter space of time. The implications that we face as a regard of the magnetosphere weakening further, although over the last two years we've seen it steady, uh, we've seen it fluctuate over a six month period of time where it's dropped slowly and the reason why we know that again is because we've got magnetometers globally now. I remember watching um, Sky News uh, yesterday morning and as it was showing the temperature map going around the earth I thought to myself well, we've got a, a magnetometer there in Hong Kong we've got a magnetometer in Arizona we did have one in California but it recently went offline and along with the one in Kentucky but you know we're going to get those 
uh, you know, other locations, perhaps not in, in California because we've got Arizona, which is only 400 miles away from there, but maybe um, in other parts of the United States we'll have more magnetometers. Um, we are thinking about putting one in Canada or two, and we will still continue to try and get one um, in Russia, uh, Siberia, and uh, India, and Pakistan, and more in Australia. But we've got them in Australia already, and we are about to send out a magnetometer over the next coming weeks. Sorry, not a magnetometer, a muon detector, so we can get an idea of what's going on in at least the strong fields in Australia. And we also want one in Brazil, as you guys know, it's the in the region of the um, South Atlantic Anomaly, which is the weakest part on our Earth. But mainly, all is I wanted to do in this video <clears throat> is just say to you guys, you know, under all the circumstances that we face, even with this current environment, with regards to COVID-19, we are still here, we've got your back, and we, as a small observatory, pack a massive, massive punch, and we have got the equipment to measure the things that we talk about. That separates us from all the others on YouTube, and I've said that time and time again. We don't just talk about these anomalies, we collect data on them, and we've got data coming in from all around the world to this little observatory and it's greatly as a response down to just a few people that have provided a little bit of funding. I mean, you compare the funding and what we do to the funding which larger organisations like NASA and the European Space Agency get and they collect the data on these same things but they do not relate to you guys as you know in such a freely and openly manner and regularly. And we do that yet we struggle along on just small amounts of donations and that is what's kept this a publicly funded observatory to this point. I just want to say, you know, guys, because of the situation with COVID, our funding has been affected here at the observatory and I'll just give you a brief idea. Over the last three days, we've managed to raise less than two sterling pounds. It is very saddening. You know, I have been thinking to myself over the last few days you know Gene you just have to carry on going you know there are people out there that do support the observatory and you know we still have the patrons although some of them have dropped off we did have regular funding from you know more people than what we do enjoy right now but you know still keep I still feel the drive to keep going and keep you know, the information coming to you guys and, you know, expand on what we're doing. I do feel, though, that, you know, the efforts that I've put in, uh, as you would, guys, you know, if you have dedicated so much time and effort to building the equipment and keeping it running and keeping the data regularly coming in, uh, you would feel a little bit disheartened with just, um, you know, funding over the last three days of £2. But I'm hopeful that maybe after this video, a few more people will step up to the line and you know help support our efforts here at the observatory. I want to keep it going guys and I want to expand on what we're doing and the only way I can do that is by keeping it funding. I know some people get tired of me asking but you know if I didn't continue pushing um, you know the links in the description for people to join us on Patreon and people to put some funding in the PayPal we wouldn't simply have what we have to date. And I just want to keep it going and know that there is more than a few people that want to keep it going. But for in order us to do that, we have to raise money. And it simply does have to be, I have to say, more than a couple of pound over three days to keep the observatory running. Guys, <clears throat> I'm interested in your opinion based on the information that I've given you with regards to pole shift, uh, the CO2 amounts, the muons, the oxygen, the magnetosphere strength. Uh, current solar activity and the, the state of our jet streams right now I'm interested in how you value or how you think our nature on this planet or the global health of this planet on a scale of 1 to 10 is doing right now I don't want to give you my um, scale on that I will do perhaps tomorrow when we talk about some of the other anomalies like earthquakes and volcanic activity that's been taking place and compare that over time um, but I'm interested in how you value um, the condition 
of health of our planet right now on a scale of 1 to 10 and if you want to just drop in the comment section your viewpoint on that just give me the figure on how you how well you think the earth's doing right now on a scale of 1 to 10 and if I can encourage a few more people you know to support us doing what we do here you know we can continue doing what we do best and that is build more equipment get it out there into the field collect the data bring it home here and get it distributed out to you guys you know that will be amazing so I will mention the link down there ask you for your support and I will say you know at this time you know be safe and take care of your loved ones you know hopefully you'll support us here at the observatory and as always guys bye for now